Hey everyone, just a quick heads up before I start. Today I'm going to be talking about some upsetting topics, like the kind that YouTube's advertisers are absolutely going to hate. So, you know, shout out to my patrons at patreon.com slash Rebecca for supporting this video. And also, if you do not want to hear about topics like suicide and domestic violence and abuse, you might want to give this one a skip. That said, I'm going to start with something I personally find really funny. Uh, James Summerton. <laughs> Summerton was a very popular YouTube creator who I had actually never heard of before H Bomber Guy made a video about plagiarism on YouTube, which exposed the fact that Summerton had engaged in some absolutely over the top theft in order to make loads of money from his videos and from Patreon patrons and from fans who donated to his fundraiser meant to kickstart a short film that never came to be just grift after grift. And that was very entertaining, obviously, but it got even wilder when Summerton responded with an apology, a really horrible apology where instead of just apologizing and then leaving to go get a real job, he tried to manipulate the audience into feeling sorry for him and into continuing to support him. So many people made fun of that apology that he almost immediately deleted it and then posted a new apology later that was somehow even worse, just full of obviously bullshit excuses. I am but a mere mortal, and as many of you know, I love mess. Uh, I found that apology so hilarious that I couldn't hold it in anymore, and I actually filmed a quick reaction over on my alt channel. I was reacting to Summerton, obviously, but I was also reacting to the people who he had hurt, some of whom were continuing to just be so nice to him and giving him the benefit of the doubt. Like, well, I don't know that he doesn't have some disorder that makes him incapable of getting a real job. I'm just saying that if he does, it probably didn't force him to steal content from other creators, but I don't know. You know, personally, I did not believe a single word that came out of his mouth. When he is just obviously lying about everything, but you're so empathetic. You're like, you're like, oh, wow, his, his mom died. <laughs> That's so sad. Jesse, I don't think this man even had a mother. Like, that's how much I think he's lying. <laughs> like, you're over here giving him the benefit of the doubt. And I'm over here being like, I bet James Summerton only exists because of some type of lab accident. Just a couple of days after I posted that video, I started getting weird comments like, guess you got what you wanted, and well, this did not age well. Because it turns out that on March 4th, Summerton posted this on his shitter account. If this message is live, it means I scheduled it before ending things. I have videos scheduled to go out over the next couple of days. Nothing new, I just wanted Nick's portfolio, that's his co-writer, of work to be available. I've left directions that any money from those videos be donated to the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention. They've tried very hard to pull me back, but there's simply no life for me anymore. I've lost everything. My only friend, my livelihood, my name, and it's all my own fault the world will be a little bit better off now. Goodbye. That post then I think almost immediately disappeared. And at the moment I saw all that, my very first thought was, oh, he's pretending to commit suicide in order to manipulate people into feeling bad for him and into attacking H Bomber Guy for making his valid criticism. And I was correct. Uh, he did not actually commit suicide, which we now know for sure just over two months later. There were hints prior, like his co-creator saying like, no, everything's fine. Uh, but now we know for sure, so you can all relax. The way we know for sure he's still alive as of the filming of this video is very, very funny. So if you stick through <laughs> to the end of this otherwise kind of dark video, uh, I will share it with you. Of course, you know, I said nothing about it at the time, uh, even as more and more people popped up accusing me of driving this poor man to suicide by simply laughing at about how obvious his previous lies were. Why did I say nothing? 
because I unfortunately have a lot of experience with this type of manipulation. The first time I experienced it was with my very first serious relationship, a man I started dating when I was 17 and he was at least 27. I say at least because I eventually learned that he lied to me about everything, <laughs> including like sneakily dyeing his hair to look younger than he was. So who knows? <laughs> Um, this was obviously, in retrospect, a really unhealthy relationship. He was also my boss. Uh, we moved in together when my roommate moved out and replaced herself with a tenant who refused to pay rent and had a gun and threatened to kill me. When I think about all this now, it's really like, that was a really chaotic thing for a teenager to go through. But whatever, it is what it is. We moved in together. Three years into our extremely screwed up relationship, I woke up and I realized it's time to get the hell out. I hustled to finish up college a semester early. I put in my 30-day notice on my job, my apartment, and my boyfriend. Leaving immediately, unfortunately, wasn't an option. And so for the next few weeks, my now ex-boyfriend had ample time to continually tell me that if I actually left him, he would kill himself. He started cutting his arms in order to sell that. Um, and I'll be honest, you know, I felt terrible about it because I have severe depression and have had many suicidal thoughts uh, throughout my life. So I, I took him completely seriously. It didn't even occur to me that he would say things like that in order to try to manipulate me. Like that did not even enter my head. Luckily, he was such a monster that I knew that even if he went through with it, it would be a better result than me staying in that relationship. So I left and guess what? He never made any attempt at suicide. He is still alive today for better or worse. The next time I encountered someone who told me that they were going to kill themselves, particularly if I did not do something, um, it was a good friend. And at that point, I went to the experts to figure out exactly what's happening. Is this just a manipulation tactic? And what exactly I should do about it? And I just wanted to share what I learned because I found it very helpful. So yes, certain people can and will use threats of self-harm and suicide with no intention of actually following through. It's hard to say how common that is because all the experts can do is ask people what their true intentions are and hope they tell the truth or try to figure out if they were telling the truth and to track suicidal threats and gestures and see how often they result in a suicide attempt. And because of how difficult it is to ever know a person's true intentions, uh, the number one rule in dealing with a friend or loved one who's making threats or gestures like that is to always treat them as though they are genuine. Now, that does not mean that in my case with my ex-boyfriend, it doesn't mean that I should have stayed in that relationship. It means that if anything, I should have informed health services on my way out the door. This is obviously problematic here in the United States where calling for health services sometimes defaults to the cops showing up. And the cops, of course, are known for often creating way more problems than they solve, especially when it comes to suicidal people. Uh, I also could have, though, informed my ex-boyfriend's parents or his brother in order to kind of leave it up to them. The point is, Always take the threat seriously and respond in whatever way you are able to help. Of course, you know, that's for friends and family. For known manipulative liars on YouTube, I personally think that just saying nothing at all is absolutely fine. That said, um, here's a little bit of comfort perhaps. Research has found that suicide threats and gestures are actually a very poor predictor of suicide attempts. This study from 2014 examined 140 patients at a psychiatric facility in Spain and concluded that those who threaten suicide and those who attempt suicide are two distinct groups that only partially overlap. Another study of more than a thousand adolescents found suicide threats slash gestures were not uniquely associated associated with suicide attempts, and youth who reported suicide threats slash gestures in the context of a history of self-harm or suicide plans were no more likely to report a history of suicide attempts. Now, some of this may be due to the protective aspect of depression, which might surprise you if you don't have it, but yeah, it's like, 
I want to die, but I can't even get out of bed to brush my teeth. So I guess I'll just live. Uh, That's one unproven hypothesis doctors have for why sometimes some people go on antidepressants and have an increased risk of suicide. They suspect that maybe the drugs are giving them the energy to follow through on things before it clears up the desire to commit suicide. But the disconnect between suicide threats and attempts is also because a decent number of people do make those threats with no intention of following through. In the case of my ex-boyfriend, thanks to my 2020 past relationship vision, I can pretty confidently state that this was a manipulation tactic. And research shows that I'm not alone. Many abusers threaten suicide to maintain control over a victim who is trying to leave, a technique known as coercive control. This overview of 200 cases of suicide found that the use of suicidal behavior was a deliberate and calculated response by which some men sought to maintain influence or control over women. Similarly, a 12-year review of domestic homicides in Ontario found that prior threats or attempts at suicide were one of the top correlated factors, along with a history of violence between the perpetrator and the victim in 72% of cases, actual or pending separation, obsessive behavior, and depression on the part of the perpetrator. And note that that does also include people who actually attempt suicide. Over the past few decades, the view of suicide as always being aggression turned inward has evolved amongst experts who now acknowledge that it can be used as a way to strike back at those they regard as wrongdoers. That's another data point in favor of that most important rule, always treat the threat as real. Even if my ex was attempting to manipulate me into staying, he may very well have followed through on his threat in order to punish me for leaving. It's worth noting, though, that not all people who threaten suicide without intending to follow through on it do so with abusive intent. A study of subjects with borderline personality disorder found that in that cohort, suicide threats are often related to emotions connected with interpersonal relationships. Suicide threats may function, albeit maladaptively, to regulate these emotions aroused by interpersonal relationships and bring needed support. And in that study I mentioned previously of the 1,000 plus adolescents, the researchers found that suicidal threats and gestures primarily fulfilled positive social functions and to communicate distress to others. In other words, it's a cry for help from someone who doesn't have the emotional maturity or emotional intelligence or the mental stability maybe to communicate their feelings in a healthy way. They still need help regardless of whether or not they are actually going to make an attempt on their life. There's still a big problem there that needs solving. And you can see how without proper treatment or education, a person can go from using these threats for support and emotional regulation to using those threats to manipulate others in a way that is abusive basically taking someone who desperately needs help and is therefore in a way a victim, turning them into someone who is victimizing others, which means, you know, it's complicated, which is why I actually debated making this video for a while because personally, you know, I found all this information to be really helpful. Uh, But at the same time, I know that there are plenty of people in the audience who will use this video as an excuse to walk away with an overly simplistic message like, all people who threaten suicide won't follow through, and so you can just ignore them. If you walk away with any one overly simplistic message, please let it be, respond to all suicidal threats and gestures as if they are genuine. And if you want it to be slightly more complicated, you can add on, unless it's a known manipulative liar who you have no actual relationship with, at which point just ignore it until people discover that not only is he still alive, but after faking his own suicide, he immediately switched over to an alt account where he began posting horny tweets, including photos of his ass and balls, eventually even trying to get a new TikTok account going using a filter that made him hot. Yeah. Yeah. You can just, you can safely ignore when that guy makes suicidal threats and gestures. Stay. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. Okay. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks. <laughs>